Hey guys, in this video I'm going to teach you about the cell cycle. Um, there's a lot of parts to the cell cycle that are extremely important. Uh, the first being why do we use the cell cycle and how do we use the cell cycle? We've already learned that all things grow and develop as part of our eight characteristics of life. So I'm just going to connect it back to that particular part of our unit. Growth is just a natural part of life, considering that there's just no possible way that you could be the same size when you're born in juxtaposition to when you're an adult, just because that would make the birthing process suck a lot. And it's just very natural for more complex multicellular organisms to grow and develop as part of their natural life cycle. How do we grow? Well, we do something called cell division, where one of our cells actually becomes two separate brand new cells. As we age, our cells naturally sort of die. They live their little cell life, and they are purged from our body either in a process called apoptosis, which I'll get into a little bit later, um, or they're kind of like our skin where they shed off of our bodies more physically and so just sort of drift off into the air and become dust. So one cell becomes two and we sort of purge the old ones and keep the new cells, which keeps us nice and fresh. That kind of brings me to why do we divide ourselves? Why should you care? Well, it does keep us young looking for a while. Um, as all things, we naturally age. And when we age, uh, we're almost like copies of a copy. We divide ourselves so many times that every little tiny mistake uh, that happens as we get older is kept. And thus, as you get older and older and older, you just have a larger percentage or a larger accumulation of mistakes. Just like if I were to take a photograph and copy it and take that copy and copy it and then take that copy and copy it and do that a hundred times, that hundredth copy isn't going to look exactly the same or as good as the original photograph, just because every time a mistake happened when I copied, all the copies after that mistake are gonna have that mistake. And that's exactly what happens in our cells. Sometimes mistakes are very natural. Sometimes mistakes happen because we make certain lifestyle choices that cause mistakes. And I'll get to that a little bit later as well. So why we do divide ourselves is to help keep us young, help make sure that all cells that aren't helping or are old get destroyed and we have new ones. It helps us grow and it helps us repair any damages as well. Repairing damages is probably one of the coolest and best parts of the cell cycle because it would really suck if every time you accidentally scraped your knee, you just had that injury for the rest of your life. That doesn't really sound like a good time to me. Um, it's really nice that you can accidentally bump into something, get a bruise, and the bruise heals. And that's just that healing that you see is just replacing those old damaged cells and destroying them and replacing them with fresh new cells. And I know someone asked me, you know, does that, why do certain things scar and other things don't? Um, a lot of times that particular part of healing just depends on, um, you know, how deep was the cut? The deeper the cut, the more likely you are to scar, like a lot of surgical scars. Um, and it's also, you know, sometimes it's just random. Sometimes you just scar and there's not really a reason. One of the main things of this class is that if you change the structure of something, you change the function. Well, that applies in the cell cycle, meaning that different cells have way different structures. So like your brain cell is not going to look the same under the microscope as your nerve cell, which isn't going to look the same under microscope as a skin cell. So if you change the structure, you're going to change the function. How does that cell work for you? But you also change how it divides as well. Certain cells are going to divide way faster than others, and that's just natural. It's because of their function. So your skin cells that reside on the outside of your body, they are the front lines for a lot of the damage that your body endures, even on a daily basis. Sometimes damage that you don't even notice but that's okay because your skin 
you're it just defines so fast that if you were to like accidentally scrape your knee, like I mentioned before, uh, it just takes about a week and it's going to be healed. It's not going to be a nasty open sore for months. So that is because your skin cells, they're on it. You know, they they see an injury and they're going to instantly start trying to close it up. You stop bleeding and then you're going to see you start to heal over the course of a few weeks rather than a few years. So the skin cells divide the quickest. On the other hand, your nerve cells are going to divide extremely slow, if not at all. And that is why nerve damage is typically permanent. So, you know, if I accidentally burn my hand on the stove and got, you know, second, third degree burns, uh, I could probably have some sort of unfeeling in my hand for the rest of my life. Just because once you destroy nerve cells, they can't actually repair themselves. If you don't undergo cell division, you can't reap the benefits of when cell division helps you. No cell division means no repair, straight up. Um, I mean, there is a dark side to cell division being that when cell division doesn't occur properly, you are at risk of developing a malignant cancer. So nerve cells aren't typically going to develop cancer because they don't divide at all. Uh, Skin cells, on the other hand, can turn into skin cancer, which divides and spreads extremely fast because skin cells divide really fast naturally. So just know that there is sort of consequences to when cell division doesn't happen correctly. Cancer is nothing more than an error in the cell cycle. And I'm going to actually create an entire video dedicated to just cancer because it's, as we know, kind of complex. And I'm just going to give you guys more of a rough idea of what it is. Um, But I definitely want to touch on it slightly because it does go with cell division. Uh, But for now, we'll just leave it at that definition and move on to how does the cell cycle happen? Um, As most things in this class, there are going to be steps to this particular cycle. The cell cycle consists of two main parts. Uh, You got interphase, which makes up 90% of a cell's life, meaning that 90% of a cell's existence it's just an interphase. It's kind of like the big buildup to the actual division. So that is it's living its little cell life, doing its cell thing, making proteins, making energy, and all the while it's sort of getting ready and building up, getting ready to divide. Uh, but that takes a really long time. So that is going to make up most of its uh, cell's life. And then you have the mitotic phase, which makes up... of the cell cycle. So it really happens pretty quick, which is why it's really annoying and really hard to find cells under the microscope that are actually in mitosis because most of the time cells are just not in mitosis. So it's really difficult to find cells that are going to be dividing or in the process of dividing because it's sort of like they're just building up to the division most of their life. Before I get into all the division parts, I'm definitely going to focus on interphase just for a second. So I'm going to... Interphase is consisted of three main parts. You've got G, 1, because it comes first. You've got S, and you have G, 2. Now, I always say that interphase is like a growth sandwich because... The growth parts, it just makes sense. If you're getting ready to physically split in half into two hopefully healthy cells, you need to make sure that you're a little bit larger than one normal cell. So you need to beef yourself up a little bit, get some nutrients, start duplicating some of those organelles to make sure both cells get some. Uh, So the G's stand for growth. Because it's just the cell beefing itself up, getting ready to divide. Now, all the magic happens in the S phase. And in terms of the test, you definitely want to make sure you remember the very important thing that happens in S phase. And that is synthesis of DNA. What this means is... When a cell divides, if you're going from one cell to two, 
you have to copy the precious blueprints of life, the DNA. Because if you just rip the DNA in half and gave half to one cell and the other half to the new cell, they're both going to be really crappy cells. They are not going to know what to do. They're going to be missing half of the instructions and it's not going to end well for anybody. It'd just be like if I gave you half of the instructions for a major project in my class and then just didn't give you the other half and expected you to complete it perfectly. That's not fair and it's not the way life works. So I'm going to actually um, draw a picture of what I think synthesis is. So say we take a normal human cell, uh, maybe, you know, one of Miss Curtis's heart cells, and my heart cell is ready to divide. Well, it's actually not because it definitely needs to copy its DNA first. So every single somatic human cell, and I'll define somatic, somatic cells are body cells, meaning heart, brain, liver, skin, everything that makes up who you are except egg if you're female and sperm if you're male. Egg and sperm have their own special division, so we're just not worry about those, um, but think that somatic cells are just all of your body cells, so 99% of who you are. Um, human beings have 46 chromosomes in their somatic cells. Now, a chromosome is just a string of DNA. So every single one of your 46 chromosomes copies itself in synthesis. So what you get is this big cell that has 92 chromosomes or twice as many as the original. So that way, when the cell splits later in mitosis, you get one cell with 46 and another identical cell with 46. So you're kind of back to normal. That is why you have to copy your DNA. Because if you're making two cells, you have to make sure each one gets a full set a full copy of the original blueprints so that way that cell can go and be functional and not turn into some mutant that's going to hurt you. The last thing I'm going to say about synthesis and I think this is definitely one of the more complicated steps so if you're kind of with me right now um, you're definitely through the worst of it is just a little bit of that pesky vocabulary that unfortunately is just part of the class so when we take our single chromosome and it copies itself in synthesis, those copies actually stay together and they almost make like a little X where they hook onto each other and this, so this is one chromosome and this one is actually two copies of the same chromosome. So it's like if I took your homework and I Xeroxed it, I would have two copies of the exact same homework and it would be almost like if I took them and I stapled them together to keep them sort of in the same place. So that is what is happening here in this weird X looking thing. It almost looks like a weird butterfly. Um, and unfortunately, this thing does have its own name. Um, and we just refer to that like double chromosome X or two copies of the same chromosome that are stuck together. Um, we call them sister chromatids. And that is important because you're going to see me kind of reference sister chromatids when I get into the steps of mitosis. Uh, and I just want you to understand that it's just two copies of the same chromosome hooked together. That'll eventually get separated, but we'll get there. Uh, so sister chromatids are identical copies of the same chromosome that are stuck together. It's very important that you make a note of that. Okay, so the cell has grown. It's duplicated the DNA. 
and it's grown some more. So now it's time for almost like the climax of the cell cycle, which is going to be the division part, um, which is going to be only 10% of the entire cycle or the mitotic phase. The first sort of step in the mitotic phase is going to be mitosis, which is sort of what we're talking about. Um, and mitosis is going to be made up of what I always refer to as PMAT. PMAT just helps you remember the order of your steps, um, which are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Telophase coming from the Greek root, some people say telo, which means the end. So that kind of makes sense. That's the last step of mitosis. After telophase, we have something called cytokinesis, uh, but we'll get there in a little bit. The first step in um, mitosis is prophase. And in prophase, you go from a cell that looks like this where the DNA is all kind of scattered and there's not really, you can't really see the chromosomes and it turns into a cell like this where you can see you've got your sister chromatids here, sister chromatid being just one X, um, which consists of two chromosomes um, and the nucleus is starting to disappear. So the major things that happen in prophase are that DNA condenses down and the nucleus starts to go away. Don't forget that prophase happens after the S phase, meaning that these cells, it's the same cell, but these have 92 chromosomes in each one. So don't forget that that number of chromosomes for a human cell has been doubled to where they have 92 when they begin mitosis instead of the normal 46. But that's okay because the cell will divide into two cells that each have 46 chromosomes in them. The next step is metaphase. And I can kind of remember this one because in metaphase, the chromatids, the sister chromatids, these guys line up in the middle of the cell. So that's all that happens. All they do is they line up in the middle of the cell. So each X being one sister chromatid or two chromosomes stuck together, they just line up in the center of our cell. Next on our journey, we have anaphase. Anaphase is where you can see our X got pulled apart into two Chromosomes, so the sister chromatids separate here in anaphase and they start heading towards the poles or either, either side of our um, cell. It's important that the sister chromatids separate because it gives each side or each new cell one of every chromosome. Because before, each X represented one chromosome that had copied itself and stuck together. So there was actually two chromosomes in that X right here. And now they're separate, so one goes to each cell, and everybody's happy. It's equal. Last in mitosis is telophase, tele meaning the end. Um, in this point, you can kind of see here that the nucleus is beginning to reform. We have our chromosomes, and we have this cleavage furrow that has formed, and it's basically the... Cell membrane is going to reform here. You can see a line where it's the cell membrane is kind of starting to form. And these cells will almost like pinch apart from each other and become two separate cells. However, the cells do not separate in telophase. That is not correct. Um, they do not separate in mitosis. It's like everything up to the separation of the cells. So think telophase right here. This goofy looking cell is still technically one cell because they're not separate yet. So just remember that. The actual separation of the cells has its own special name and that that is cytokinesis. So here you can see there is a gap between the cells. The cell membrane is completely reformed around both. So cytokinesis meaning cyto for cell, kinesis, think like kinetic energy movement. 
So it is the two selves moving away from each other. So each of these cells is going to have a full 46 chromosomes for a human being, if that's what it is. So the full somatic amount of DNA is going to be in each of these cells. And another thing is that these cells are genetically identical. So if a brain cell decides to divide, you don't get, you know, a brain cell and a kidney cell. You get two brain cells that are genetically identical to each other. Once a cell is too old to divide or it's not really doing its job well anymore, what will happen is apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. It's controlled. This isn't something that shouldn't happen. Old cells have to get disintegrated to make room for new cells, which is a good thing. So an old cell, all that happens is that there's a signal that says, hey, this cell is super old and it gets destroyed. Um, for the most part, all I want you to know is apoptosis is um, when a cell gets destroyed. So it doesn't go back into the cell cycle uh, where it'll divide again. It actually just kind of like ends its little cell life um, and the parts of that cell will be used for creating something new. So that is all I want you guys to know about mitosis and cytokinesis um, in the cell cycle. Uh, and I will make another video that talks about cancer, which is irregular patterns in the cell cycle.